wer fängt an? Ich, ich bin die Frau. Neben mir ist jetzt Uli Lust, Comiczeichnerin aus Wien. Und das ist Kai Pfeiffer, Comiczeichner aus Berlin. Sie wohnt allerdings auch in Berlin. Jemand, der nicht erfindet, sondern beobachtet und reagiert auf, hm, auf Ereignisse, selbsterlebte oder recherchierte. Also es geht um Interpretation und das Entdecken von Geschichten, die bereits da sind, aber nie, niemand anderes könnte sie eben nicht erzählen. Hm, danke. Klang gut, hätte ich gerne über mich gesagt. Hm. <lacht> Fertig machen ist nicht meine größte Stärke. Mhm. Ähm, was kann ich noch nicht? Selbstkritik gehört auch noch zu den oh, Dingen, die ich ja. weit von mir weiß. Äh, hm. Ich mag gerne ausschlafen. Ich mag fast alles, aber besonders mag ich Dinge, die mir unverständlich bleiben, also wo immer noch eine Frage zurückbleibt. Also mich. Hm. Seit ich 45 bin, mag ich die Natur wahnsinnig gerne. Hm. Vorher fand ich Stadt aufregender. Ich bin Stadtmensch. Stadt ist mir manchmal fast schon zu dreidimensional. Ich glaube, meine absolute Besessenheit sind Bücher. Aufstehen früh morgens. Du magst es flach, gibst zu. Ja. Alles muss flach sein für mich. Es gilt natürlich nur für die Form. Nicht für die Frauen? Nein. Ich muss mir meine Ideen mühsam erliegen. Das stimmt, das gilt für dich absolut. <lacht> Meisterin des Nickerchens. <lacht> Ich habe vor einigen Jahren begonnen zu recherchieren für einen Comic, der äh, im, in der Jungsteinzeit spielt, also 6000 bis 3000 vor Christus. Und damals war Europa von dichten Wäldern überzogen. Und nun kenne ich als Österreicherin Wälder sehr gut, aber die Wälder aus der Urzeit scheinen andere gewesen zu sein, weil sie werden immer als undurchdringlich beschrieben. Und ich habe angefangen nachzudenken, wie sahen diese undurchdringlichen Urwälder eigentlich aus. Was man heute kennt, das sind Nadelwaldplantagen. Ähm, und in äh, Bialowice in Polen gibt es einen der letzten europäischen Urwälder. Äh, leider wurde, ist er auch gleichzeitig bedroht. Immer wieder ähm, wird dieser Wald als Holzressource angesehen oder als Ressource für Jagdtiere. Und ähm, die Bäume sind schnell abgehackt, während das Beschützen eine sehr langwierige und anstrengende Arbeit ist. Hast du auch was zu sagen? Naja, also ich mache sowieso jeden Blödsinn mit, den diese Frau vorhat. Insofern <lacht> musste ich nicht lange drüber nachdenken, mit ihr in den Wald zu gehen. Bialowica. Białowieża. Białowisa. Białowieża. Białowieża. Sorry, I have to say it. If you say biało, it's like an egg. Biało. <laughs> biało. Biało. Biało wieża. Biało wieża. Fantastic. Biało wieża.
because 16% of the forest is a national park, and everybody thinks that it's protected. It's very difficult to tell the audience that it's not. When you hear Białowieża Forest, you think national park, because it, it's so stupid that, that it's not, right? The last bison was killed in 1919, right? Yeah, it was killed in 1990 by poacher, but the poacher was a local. It's not that the strangers came and yeah. killed our bisons, it was the local people who, who did it. You think uh, he knew that he killed the last one? I think they didn't care about that. It, somehow it was hard time. Remember, we haven't been on a map of the world for over 120 years, so mm. it was like a building new country from the from the beginning and anyway in the past the poaching was more i uh, i can't say legal because it never was legal yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. but it's uh, it's more like um, yeah more people did it and the organs like police or something didn't spend so much time to to hunt for that because they had some other uh, more important probably things to do. So there was some uh, few bisons uh, still living in the zoos in, around Europe and then the society somehow decided, okay, let's uh, let's try to uh, bring back these bisons mm. uh, to the nature. And in Białowieża, they create this breeding center. Uh, they bring here all the bisons they can find, uh, which are somehow connected with this uh, lowland bisons, yeah, uh, blood. Uh, but it was not only. So finally, after out of seven individuals. We have a new, pop somehow new population, yeah, the new new breed population. And and so how many are they now? Do you know that? It's over uh, around 605 mm. or four, something like that. O over 600 on the Polish side of uh, um, Białowieża Forest. Yeah. In a Belarusian side, there is around uh, 500 bisons. They seem to be not interesting, yeah? <laughs> but after uh, a while, after the really detailed analysis in the laboratory, it turns out that it's something precious, something which may be spotted only in really primeval or natural forests. Yeah? As Białowieża forest, we don't say that it's a primeval forest because mm. people were present here for yeah. centuries. But at least we know that it was never cut down, never burned down. So since the last glaciation, it develops at its own speed and um, it's perfect. <laughs> so it's perfect for the fungi. Without the fungi, it wouldn't be uh, looking like that. This is not only theory, but it's in fact, it was that, uh, revealed by some studies in North America that particularly the roots of the trees, they are connected, not by themselves, but mainly by the fungi and mycorrhizae. So the fungi which are growing on the roots, they're they connecting them and there's some exchange of, of water, of minerals between the trees and probably some kind of information, electric impulses. And so, so one tree which is attacked by the parasites or fungi can yeah, spread the information to other trees that, that something is going on, so some stress signals. Much more happens under the ground than above the ground in the terms of the communication and the exchange of information. Some species cannot function without fungi species. And this knowledge develops, yeah? When, uh, I don't know, 30, 40 years ago, when I was at school, they taught us that only several species are uh, creating such symbiosis or mycorrhizae. And now it turns out that almost all of them are in some sort of relation with trees and fungi. Yeah? So that's, that's really interesting. The best studied part of the Białowieża Forest is the strictly protected area of the Białowieża, uh, of the Białowieża National Park. So this is 5,000 hectares or yeah, the National Park is a bit over 10,000 hectares. But this, this is really the heart of the Bionvisia Forest. It's been legally protected for almost 100 years. So nothing, in fact, was done here. No uh, dead wood was taken out. 
and it may be um, treated as source of everything. So even if we have in other parts of the forest fragments of forest which were planted by people in the past, which were modified by forest management, they can easily be colonized uh, with the species coming from here. Because fungi are not great walkers, yeah? so they don't colonize fast and they cannot be transported for longer distances. But uh, if you have such a place like this, then after some time, after 100 years, for instance, you might have the results. <laughs> yeah, so it's a long time, uh, long, uh, long story. What we find out that the, that the modern forestry that changed the, the forest from the living organism to the plantation of the trees, because there's a lot of components in the commercial forest is missing, a lot of species of insects, fungi, and so on and so on. We did a kind of experiments, and uh, when the big storm destroyed a big part of the forest in the Masurian lakes, and we expect that there will be a lot of uh, insects and fungi there because there's a big amount of dead trees and it did, did, didn't happen this because there were no source of this. They, they disappeared from the, from the commercial forest. In these terms, the Uvieża forest is the most complete forest in the terms of components and the terms of processes ongoing here. Here, because of this high diversity, the species compete for the same space, for the same resources, and that's why none of the species can be, you know, dominating. And that doesn't happen in managed forest because there are only few species, uh, and those most aggressive ones, those which are really pests for managed forest, they may dominate and and kill uh, forests. So, and that happens. But here, because of this high diversity, they try to keep each other down, yes, under control. In the normal forests in Europe, we clean the dead wood away because they say it's a source of parasites. The dead wood doesn't exist in a normal forest. What does it mean for the condition of European forests. Lower biodiversity, of course, yes. L l lower resistance to any disturbances. Uh, yeah, that's true that uh, usually in the managed forest the, that wood doesn't occur or it occurs in a really small amount. That wood is very important and in many cases uh, young uh, trees are growing directly on that wood. We call it something like Mm, mother trees, mother logs uh, or nanny logs. That wood is very important if you uh, want to have uh, natural tree regeneration. That's very touching, actually. <laughs> <laughs> In the Oveja forest there is a bit too much of spruce. Everywhere here we have uh, spruces, which uh, in this place uh, were planted. That means that this is not a proper place for spruces. And that's why this forest is dying. Um, on the lower level, we have trees forest regeneration, natural regeneration, um, like um, which is supposed to be here. Uh, we have oaks and hornbeam, and those are the proper species for this kind of uh, forest. So, so why don't they plant the proper species from the beginning? Why do they plant uh, spruce? if they are not healthy in this area? From economical reasons, because spruce were growing faster, that's why foresters um, could have money faster as well. We have also many other uh, parts of the forest where are all the spruces, which oh. weren't planted here. Yeah? Are they uh, dying too, the older ones? Yes, they're dying as well. The reason could be uh, climate. In the past we had um, climate uh, much more colder, much, much more humid, and in the last uh, decades uh, everything is, uh, is changing. 
we have a dry um, years, dry summer, and uh, this could be reaction. Yeah. But we have to also say that bark beetle doesn't kill the spruce. Uh, spruce are uh, getting weak because of the of the drought, and bark beetle is infecting the trees afterward. This is one of the old spruce which fallen down during the storm, and we can see on this example how uh, flat, how short is this uh, rooting system, and uh, that's why uh, spruces are so vulnerable, uh, so sensitive when they don't have enough of water. They cannot use water which is deep in the ground. That's why they are getting very weak during the drought. And then in 2016, the National Forest Authority and the Ministry of Environment signed the papers saying that because of the bark beetle, they are, you can cut more than usually in that forest. And in 2017, in April, the first time they brought harvesters into the forest. Harvester is a huge forest machinery, a heavy duty machine that weights tons, which is huge. It's like this room probably and may higher. And it's followed by the forwarder that picks up the wood after yes. this and puts it in, in order so then the truck can come and take it out. So. The harvester can cut up, up to 300, 350 probably trees a day. It's like, it's like happening, happening, happening. So, and there were five harvesters in the whole forest. So you can imagine how much trees were cut. During last year, they took out 6,000 trucks full of wood mm, from that forest, full of spruce, because it was only the spruce who has this particular bark beetle. So when they put the harvesters in, they said, yeah, you cannot enter this part, this part, this part. They, they closed the whole of the forest. So the first things which started to happen here uh, were the uh, this civilian disobedience walks. In a previous place on the ground, we had a very dense layer of young trees, young spruce. And as you can see, we have uh, almost nothing here, only very deep traces after harvesters. Harvesters destroyed uh, everything, young plants, young trees. It's almost like a uh, desert. And because we were blocking the harvesters, because we were doing all the civilian disobedience walks, so we were kind of, so they are saying that we are trespassing the closed areas. So to make very long story short, we have close to 400 court cases that we are accused either of trespassing or being on the area that we are not allowed to be on, or we have civil cases, which means that they are suing us for money that they lost because they couldn't cut the trees, so they couldn't sell them, so they lost the money. But at the same time, they are saying that they are not cutting the money for, that they are not cutting the trees for the money. In July 2017, uh, Court of Justice said that um, logging um, because of the bark beetle is uh, forbidden. That's why foresters change explanation and they said that uh, they um, logging because of the safety reasons. But we are standing on the place which is um, distance um, from the uh, nearest road, um, 70, 80 meters. So uh, trees which were growing in this place uh, didn't make any danger for people who used the road. We started the camp, we had two goals. One goal was to stop the cutting, to stop the logging, and to get the harvesters out of that forest. And the main goal that we have still ahead of us is to make this whole area a national park. So far we managed to, to, to kick out the harvesters, which is big um, success, but still it's just a battle. It's not the one war. 
Uh, if we use that terminology, which I'm not so happy about. So you would call the normal forests not real forests? The forest we see elsewhere in Europe is just this more like tree plantations than, than the forest. Most of the components which are, are making the forest living organisms are, are missing. If you leave the forest, and even though there will be dead wood, there, there will be birds will come like woodpeckers and so on, but they will not find the food because there's the whole process. So the if you have dead wood, the, the fungi and bacteria they start the process of decaying, then there are coming insects which are make the food for the other organisms. There's, there's all chains of the mm -hmm. food chain. So it's not so easy that you just leave the dead wood and you will have everything there immediately. This, this is more complicated than we think. What the foresters see, they see the, the trees. Yes. And they think if they plant the trees, the everything appear immediately. They will follow the trees, but this is the, what the, uh, David Attenborough called this is the cargo cult. What the people on the Pacific Islands did, I don't know if you know this, there were the American bases on the Pacific Islands, and there were all the goods coming, this airplanes bases. Yeah, yeah. And after the war, the, the Americans were gone, and the native people there, they started to build the uh, starting places for the airplanes and uh, some towers and they expect that if they build this uh, the goods will come they didn't see the connection between the presence of americans and the planes and they see only that there were there were towers there were places where the planes landed and they think if they build this the, the everything will come to them, to them. No. and the, the foresters see that this is the same yeah way of seeing the, the forest. If they think if they plant the trees, the everything will come with the trees, but it's not the true. This is long going process. Mm -hmm. it, it needs thousands or hundreds of years. And if you break this, that will, they will not turn to, 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 to the same stage because, uh, yeah, many, many elements or organisms are, are gone because of the, of, the, of the use, of the commercial use. Plant, cutting, planting, and so on, yeah. yeah. If you break this process in some moment, then they will not return to, to the same stage. For me, that was really fascinating on, the, on the, this cargo cart. That you, you, see, you put some, some elements and you think that everything happens, yeah, like, yeah, miracle, but this is it's not the true. I have one question which has nothing to do with fungi, but I'm asking it myself the whole time. I go around in Villa Aluvija in the restaurants and a lot of them tell, sell bison steak. How, isn't it a, a protected species? Oh, well, the bison is a protected species, uh, of course, and the animals are not hunted in the Biovija forest. So, of course, mm, there are some uh, animals which are shot, eliminated, because of some diseases, for instance. There are people in the national park which are entitled to kill an animal who is injured, for instance, with a broken leg, and then uh, they may be eliminated, but every case is accepted by the ministry, so it's not so, so you know, as you wish.
So, das war's von unserer Seite. Ende gut, alles gut? Nicht ganz. Ähm, die polnische Regierung, er wurde auf die Finger geklopft, sie dürfen kein Holz im Naturschutzgebiet fällen. Die Naturschützer haben gewonnen, aber nicht wirklich. Sie haben immer noch an die 400 Gerichtsklagen äh, anhängen oder sie haben dagegen zu kämpfen. Und diese ähm, Gerichtsverhandlungen kosten natürlich Geld. Wenn Sie sie unterstützen möchten, bitte spenden Sie hier. Genau, sehr schön.